So one of the biggest common questions that I keep getting is, Dwayne, I know I need experience to get hired for my first tech job. But where do I get that experience? How can I prove that I'm actually good enough to get that tech job? And the question is actually kind of interesting because you need the experience that you get at a tech job in order to actually be qualified for the tech job. And so in the computer industry, technology, software, engineering, we call this recursion, which is why I've got that case loaded. It's very important that you understand this concept because if you don't understand recursion, then you're probably not qualified to understand recursion. That is not a joke, I'm being deadly serious. And so the issue here is that these same people are often the same people that tell me they don't need to learn about design patterns and they don't know what a linked list is. And that is a problem because that is also a prerequisite to get a job in software. If you don't know what a design pattern is, if you don't know what the simple, simple, simple things are with algorithms and whatever, then you're not going to be qualified. Okay. There are things that you learn typically in school, typically as part of, you know, prior working in the industry. And these are the things that build us. These are the things that allow us to get things done. Okay. The, the command pattern. This is any CLI app. Okay. Iterator. This is anytime you're accessing an array or a list and, and going through each one you've got the ability to do pub public uh, publish and subscribe. This is the observer pattern, okay? You, you've got so many different things here that you need to learn about. And so one of the things that you should be doing is studying your butt off and learning these things. And you should be actively going out of your way to make sure that you understand every single one of these, okay? It is not just a random book. These are the Bibles of the industry. If you don't understand them, then you are not qualified, okay? As part of that, you also need to have experience working in free and open source software. If you haven't done that, that's your problem. The reason you don't have any experience working on a software team is because you've never worked in open source on a large project. If you were willing to actually work on something that was GPL, you would get that very quickly and the value would then go out to everybody and be something you could point to on your resume. But because you haven't done that and because you don't care about other people enough to actually want to do that because you're only thinking about yourself and your own desire, your own selfish desire to get a job in the industry, you don't have that industry experience. And so first thing you should do is get a GitHub. Okay? Here's mine. I have a lot of repositories. A lot, I've done a lot of open source contributions over the years. And more recently, mm, I've done less because I've been busy. But you'll notice that, you know, I did do some stuff recently. Let's see here. Let's see, load. Let's see. This branch is one commit behind because I literally, let's sync the fork and figure out because I actually worked on this branch, okay? I actually contributed to this little Minecraft clone and I wrote some Rust code and I gave it to them. That's what open source is. And so the, one of the things that you really need to understand is that, oh, I see, they, oh, I see. So I fixed it, I got it working and now they're archiving it because now that it's done, we finished it, it's, it's done. Software is done. I finished it. There you go. They moved on to the next project. That is exactly how open source works. And so one of the things that you should understand is that when you give your contributions to people, let's look at the things here. Look, this was exactly, they merged in the pull request. 
And then they are, they said, oh, wow, it works again. It actually works. Everything's perfect. People can use it. It's done. And then they update the readme and they, they actually do the, yep, it's archived. Perfect. I finished it for them. We're done with Minecraft, everybody. But that's exactly, you know, jokes aside, that's exactly how open source works. You give your contribution to the world knowing that you're not going to get anything for it. You give your contribution to the world knowing that all it will do is make other people's lives better and enable them to do something. Even if it's just run a Minecraft clone without it crashing, as it was in my case. Because all I did was fix some overflows and reformat some code to make it easier to read and learn from. Here's my, here's my contribution. Here's what I did. Okay, that's it. This small thing, okay? I did added some bounds checking. I made sure the math was accurate and I made sure that it was visibly accurate and something people could learn from so they didn't have to worry about remembering order of precedence and rust to be able to actually know how the math was being done. And there, it's done. And this was literally what got the project to be considered done enough that it's now archived and they're going to work on a new version. I got it working, so it's done now. You need to start thinking to yourself about what you can do for other people. Because one of the things that you need to understand as an engineer is you have an obligation to build for others. The reason you're an engineer, the reason you're a builder is because you're building critical infrastructure for other people, even if it's just something stupid like this to make it easier for other people to have fun. Okay, this was open source. That's why I felt like it was okay for me to contribute to. I knew that some crazy company wasn't going to get billions of dollars off of my contribution. So I was willing to give them an hour of my time and, and do this work. Look at the code, audit it, compile it. To be honest, compiling it took maybe 15 minutes, uh, you know, because it was such a slow compile. So it was the bulk of the time that I spent. But you have to understand that if you want the experience that you need to get into software, not only do you need to have an understanding of design patterns and algorithms and everything else, but you also need to have an understanding of free software because it's a part of that community and it's something that you're never going to get away from. Even the biggest companies use free software, okay? Companies spend millions of dollars every day on Linux and open source stuff that the Free Software Foundation initially created or funded or helped with. And as a result of that, you need to be familiar with it. So get familiar with the GPL. Get familiar with the differences between the GPL version two and GPL version three. Get familiar with the AGPL. And get familiar with the new versions of things that are coming around the corner because there's gonna be some big shakeups on that soon. And most of all, be willing to give to others code that will ease suffering. You know what this change did? It stopped a crash. It allowed people to check this out, play with it, get excited, and then start looking at the code and learn something. Was it a complete Minecraft clone? No, of course not. But it might give them ideas. It might give them a little bit of enjoyment. And that's why I did it. I'm not a junior. I don't need this on my resume. But if you are a junior, then you critically need things like this on your resume. We need to see things that you've actually done that have helped the world be a better place. That's the critical requirement. It's not just about the recursive dependency of having the experience to get the experience. Okay? It's also how much suffering have you mitigated for the world? That is a critical requirement. And when I hire, I look for that. And if you haven't done anything or you're only for yourself, then you don't get the job. So that is what you need to get into the industry. That is what you need to get those critical bits of experience on a team. It's little interactions like this. It was an hour of my time 
in the back and forth to get this closed and to get it merged in was part of that process. And you know what? If you're a junior and you've never worked in the industry, then that process will be very education. 